Hola, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to work through a 5.3 to 5.5 quiz review. There are a bunch of questions on this review. Your quiz won't be this long. I just wanted to give you plenty of practice questions. Uh, you'll have, you also have the answer key along with it. So I'm going to pick a few questions to help us um, prepare for our quiz, and you can do the other ones on your own, and you have the answers there with you. The first four questions are all very similar. It says solve each equation by factoring, but in fact, one through four are already factored. So these are already factored. So please do not multiply them out and then factor them again. I've had, I've had students do that. So these are already factored. So you don't have to do a whole lot for these. And so since they're already factored, we know that if two things multiply together to equal zero, that one of them needs to be zero. So either k minus 8 equals zero, or 2k minus 5 equals zero. And we can solve both of these little equations. We can add 8 to both sides, so k equals 8. We can add 5. And then divide by 2 k equals 5 halves. So those are our two solutions, 8 and 5 halves. Uh, numbers 2, 3, and 4 are similar. I'm going to go to 2 because it's a little bit unique. But this just means, and you don't have to write this, this just means x plus 5 times x plus 5 is equal to zero. So really what we're thinking is x plus five, that has to equal zero in order for this to equal zero. So we would subtract five from both sides. So again, you're just taking this factor, setting it equal to zero. So we have six P equals negative five, dividing both sides by six gives us P equals negative five sixths. We only have one solution for this one that's a negative 5 6 that kind of connected with the fraction bar so negative 5 6 3 and 4 are similar let's jump down to a few of these other ones number 5 and following we do have to factor these now these are uh, 5 through 10 are set up nicely because you see that they all have equals zero, and that's what we want. We want them to equal zero. So in the following ones, 11 and, and following, we'll have to actually um, get everything on one side so zero is on the side. So since they're equal to zero, we're going to go ahead and try to factor. And so we think to ourselves, how do we get x squared? Well, we know we need an x and an x. And then we think of our factors of 56, 1 and 56, 2 and 28, 3 doesn't work, 4 times 14, 5 doesn't work, 6, no, 7 times 8. So we want to try these. And remember, I usually start with the bottom options and work my way up. I have a positive here, which means I mean, need the same sign. And that sign is a positive, looking at the other one. So we have a positive times a positive, And I'm going to try 7 and 8. I can mentally do this part, but I'm going to write it for you. This is a 7x. So I have to check the inner and the outer. An 8x. 7x plus 8x is the 15x, so I factored correctly. I'm going to erase this. We factored correctly, but we're not finished. We need to solve this. And so, remember, either x plus 7 equals 0 or x plus 8 equals 0. Subtract 7 from both sides, subtract 8 from both sides, and you get two answers negative 7 or negative 8. 
going to move over to number six. This one's a little different. It only has two terms. But we learned whenever we factor, we want to find a common factor if possible. And there is a common factor here. There's an R. So R, we factor out an R. We're left with an R plus 7. So either, so this is two things multiplied together equals 0. So either R equals 0 or R plus 7 equals 0. Well, this one is one of our answers. Subtract 7 from both sides on the other one. And we get R equals 0 or negative 7. I'll leave 7 and 8 for you guys to work on and practice with. I'm going to come down to number 9. Number 9, it's set equal to 0, so that's good. Um, can we? Are there any common factors? Well, 4 goes into all of those, so we can factor out a 4. x squared, factor 4 out of 36, you get 9x, and 4 goes into 80 20 times. Now this 4 doesn't have a variable with it. If it had a variable, it would be one thing, but it doesn't. So re we really can just divide everything by 4. And now we just have x squared plus 9x plus 20 equals 0. And now we try to factor, which I think it will work out pretty nicely. We have x times x would give us our x squared. 20, options for 20, 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. Again, I usually try to start with the lower ones, and if they don't work, I work my way up. Two positives, we have 4 and 5. So either x plus 4 equals 0 or x plus 5 equals 0. Running out of room here, so x equals either from here, subtract 4, so x equals negative 4. And from here, we would subtract 5 from both sides. And those are the two solutions. Number 10 is similar to that, so I'm going to leave that one for you guys. Number 11. Well, as mentioned before, we need to have a 0 on one side. So this one don't try to start factoring yet. You have to subtract 3 from both sides first. So we get x squared plus x minus 30 equals 0. Now that we have that set equal to 0, we can try factoring. There's no common factors. So we just go straight to factoring. We have a negative here. How do we get a negative, as in a negative 30? Well, first. How do we get an x squared? I should start with that. We need an x and an x. To get a negative 30, we need a positive and a negative. And then our factors of 30 are here. And we just start trying. So 5 and 6. Let's check it. 5x and negative 6x. That adds up to equal negative 1x. We don't want a negative 1x. We actually want a positive 1x. And so we learned if that happens, we go ahead and switch our signs. So this should be minus 5 and plus 6. And now we can solve. So either x minus 5 equals 0. If we add 5 to both sides, we get 5 or x plus 6 equals 0, subtract 6 from both sides, and we get x equals negative 6. So our solutions are 5 and negative 6. Uh, number 12 is similar to number 11, and we're going to go ahead and... Mm, Let's go ahead and do number 15. 
to number 15, we want zero on one side. So we'll go ahead and subtract 35 from both sides. And at the same time, we can add 4p to both sides because that will give us a zero on the right side. When we do this, on the left, we want to put this in descending order. So we have 6p squared. We can combine these like terms. That's negative 11p. And then we still have that negative 35 equals 0. And now we need to factor this. Well, we have to get a 6p squared. Well, we have a couple options for that. We have uh, 6p and 1p, or 2p and 3p. I'm going to try 2 and 3. We'll see what happens. If no options work with this, we'll have to try the 1 and 6. So we have a negative 35, which means we need one positive and one negative. Maybe they'll have to be switched later, maybe not. 35, options are 1 and 35, and 5 and 7. Let's plug 5 and 7 in there. Check the inner, that's 15p. Check the outer. That's negative 14p. Do they add up to equal? Looking at this one right here. Do they add up to equal negative 11p? They do not. So 5 and 7 are not correct there. We can switch their order. So let's put the 7 first and then the 5. So 7 here and 5 here. What's going to happen? We have 21p and then minus 10p gives us 11p, but we want negative 11p, so remember we switch signs. So this becomes a negative 7, this becomes a positive 5, I'm going to erase this work here, and now we know that either 2p minus 7 equals 0, or 3p plus 5 equals 0. For this one, we can add 7 to both sides. Sorry about how squished together this is. Add 7 to both sides, we get 2p equals 7, and then divide both sides by 2. So from this one, p equals 7 halves. And then we'll try to divide this here. Subtract 5 from both sides. We have 3p equals negative 5, and then we divide both sides by 3 for our other solution, which is p equals negative 5 thirds. And so for this one, took some work, but we got it. That was 7 halves, well, p equals. 7 halves, negative 5 thirds.